name is Rufilo Mochao Mapaya and today we'll be talking about my story into audiology and a brief introduction into audiology. So let's get right into it. Welcome to my mind where all the conversations and experiences are housed. Today we have an interesting series that we're starting. So this series is all about audiology. And as I had said, I studied for audiology. And I'll be starting this series that talks about everything audiology. So we'll be naming it Audiology in South A, which is also the business that I started. So we'll get right into it. So this is just my story into how I got into audiology and just a brief introduction of audiology as a whole. So how I got into it was that... Um, in grade 11, grade 12, you start with um, starting to apply for universities and stuff, right? So I got into the introduction of actually there are people who study for this in like life sciences. So, you know, in grade 12 that um, in life sciences, you have this essay that you have to write about the ear. So it's about hearing and the hearing system and then the eyes i think and then there are other topics there so i used to cram the essay for hearing system right and i was like okay this is very interesting but how how does it fall into a curriculum that they needed to teach us about so there's probably people who actually specialize in such things so I started being like, okay, I know about this thing. I didn't research it right away because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I just started by like, okay, let's see. I just like it. I know that I like it, but I didn't know that there's something that relates to it. Okay. And then um, I keep looking to the side because that's where my notes are in grade 11. Uh, my marks were not that great uh, for me to apply, so I didn't apply um, in any university. And then in grade 12, I was like, okay, I'll start applying in grade 12. But then in between, like there was no one who was actually helping us with applying and all of those things. So you didn't know where to go specifically or what to do. So I didn't even know that you can apply with your grade 12, like, um, June results or whatever results in, in, in metrics. I just thought that you had to have your metric certificate there and that's when you can start applying. So I didn't apply for anything. So um, after that, I decided, uh, so after grade 12, um, I passed very well. And then I started to look for things that I would do. But then at home, they were like, you can't just apply for anything and everything. So why not wait and search for things that you would like to do? And then I was like, okay, that's great because some parents are not like very into the idea of you taking a gap year. So when the opportunity granted itself, I was like, let me take it. And then I took it and I took a gap year. But in that year, I wanted something to do. So um, there was a friend of my mom who was like, yeah, she can do something. I know something that she can do. In that year that can hurt that can earn her money and then she can be busy with something while applying so i got a learnership to do um technical support and then i started doing that but then you know when you come from a family that doesn't even know like registration processes and stuff like that at least i was getting money so i was able to pay for my own like registration fees and stuff like that and the most expensive one <laughs> is the way that I got into, but I'll explain that um, a bit later. So I was working there during the learnership for about six months. So while I was there, um, it's technical support. So you have um, computers and stuff at your disposal. So everyone who was there was actually either in university college or applying. So we were all in this journey together. So we started looking for places. So in our spare time that we were not doing um, anything learnership related, we were applying and stuff like that. So I started to apply, but I didn't know what to apply for. So I started looking into the fact that what is the field that I actually like? 
And then I was like, okay, I like health sciences, but I don't want to be a doctor per se. So what else can I do in the health sciences that can put me in that place, but I don't have to be a doctor, a nurse, like all of those conventional careers, you could say. And then I was like, okay, let me research more into other careers and stuff like that. And I found that you do have like allied health professionals and then I was like let me look into that and then I saw that there's occupational therapy physiotherapy dietetics um audiology speech therapy and I think a lot of people know speech therapy more than they know audiology and they actually go hand in hand so I was like let me look at how their curriculum is like structured And then I saw that I'm not a speech therapy (laughs) person and I'll also explain that in future um, videos on why I didn't actually choose that because we are so closely related. We are in the same department. We do the same um, modules in the first um, semester. First year, actually, not even semester, in the first year. So um, I'll explain more on why I didn't choose that. So I was like, audiology seems like the, like, like the right direction I would go into. But there are only limited like universities that give audiology. And I couldn't apply for other universities that um, offer audiology because I have a child who stays in Gauteng. So I can't leave that child and go to other provinces. So I had to limit my options to what is available in Gauteng and only two universities in Gauteng offered um, audiology. So I applied to two of those, which is UP, University of Pretoria and VIRTS. And then I also wanted to broaden my my search per se so there are no other universities that offer audiology but i just decided to apply at uj for like radiography and stuff like that i don't even remember the list because yeah that's how much i didn't pay but then um i applied and then i wrote this thing is it the nbt's I think it's the NBTs. I look at my husband when I'm looking that way. So I, you write the NBTs and then I think it's VIT that wants the NBTs and UJ. And then I wrote that I didn't even know that UP doesn't want it, but I just wrote it just in case. And I didn't do well as I expected <laughs> because that thing is hard, but at least at UP they didn't want it and I didn't know. So at least they didn't want it. And they were the first university to um, tell me that they had accepted like my application and all of that. So I was like, oh, that's great. They're the first people to answer. And looking back, it's like, Mm, and I didn't want UP for some reason. I wanted vids because everyone hypes vids like it's the epitome <laughs> of South Africa. But yeah, I didn't want UP. I didn't want any other university except um, vids and UCT. And I couldn't go to, U- to UCT because of my child. So vids is not answering. UP has answered. UJ is not answering. And then my parents are like, UP has answered and it's fast in its things. So just accept the offer and we'll see what happens um, uh, in future things. So I accept and then the next struggle is NSFAS and stuff. But for some reason, it went very smoothly for me. So I was able to apply in everything and accept it in like days or so. So I was cool with that. And then I'm waiting for the other universities to to reply and they are not replying. And I'm like, I don't understand why they are not replying. And then I get a message like at the beginning of the year or so, I think after I had registered for UP and they say that my NBT results got lost (laughs) and that um, that's why they couldn't answer me like in due time and stuff like that. So UC team and vets, um, apparently the NBT results go to UCT and then they sub- they um, take them to all of the other universities that you applied to. So UCT lost the results and then that's why VITS didn't answer me. And by the time that they answered me, their course thing was full. 
So that's why I didn't get in there. And then UJ answered and said I got accepted for radiography. I don't even know the type of radiography that I applied for. But they had accepted me and I was like, I'm not going there <laughs> um, in any way. So it was like, ah, that's nice. But yeah, I had already accepted something and I registered for audiology in UP. So um, story cut short, I chose audiology because firstly, I was interested in high school, life sciences. Um, when they were teaching that thing, I was interested. And then in my gap year, I got the opportunity to research about um, who's the specialist that actually works with ears and stuff like that. And I got into it. And um, you can actually do the medical route into um, what's this thing, otolaryngology and ENT and stuff like that. But that's a long way. I can't be studying for like... 10 to 15 years to specialize in something so it was like audiology was the option for me and later on i actually found out that i don't need to do maths and physics and stuff like that so that was a real 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 bonus because it's like if you didn't do well in maths and physics in high school why are you bothering yourself like i can't going i can't be going into university to fail <laughs> that's that's not the plan so it was great that i ended up doing that and then i applied i was uh, accepted i registered and then i got in and then when you get in, there is a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot of surprises. And I think you have to prepare yourself for the environment and everything. Already it's something that nobody knows about. So you can expect that everyone is going to be asking you what exactly are you doing? Because the minute you say I'm doing audiology, everyone is like, is it sound engineering? <laughs> and it's like, no, it, do, it doesn't even, you know, link to that. We do work with sound engineers. That's nice. But it's not, it's not that part. We are not in the engineering building or even in the engineering faculty. So um, that's something you have to brace yourself for. You have to keep um, answering questions about what exactly that you're doing and the fact that people are going to be calling you doctor and that's nice but sometimes you can tell them that you're not a doctor but they are still going to be calling you a doctor because you're wearing scrubs and you just do something that is health related okay and then um i had a point where was saying what is audiology so let me explain what audiology is so an audiologist is um there are more scientific um definitions that you can search for and i think there are websites that are going to pop up the minute you type audiology that are very audiology orientated and you can get everything that you need from there from asha from sashla so hps HPCSA as well has um, that type of content that you can get um, that type of things from. But the way that I would explain it for me, the way that I understand it is that it's a professional that works with um, hearing. So it's a hearing specialist for hearing health, hearing, um, hearing loss prevention, um, hearing awareness um and then we we assess we manage we treat hearing related um diseases disorders um and pathologies so it also goes to the point of people don't know that audiology has a balance system involved in it the hearing system and the vestib system in one ear and then um, the vestib system is responsible for your balance so we can also balance with our ears as well so it's not just anything else that other people think of people probably think of your balance with your legs with your body posture and all of that but our ears are also responsible for that so it's hearing care specialist that look at the hearing system and also the balance system. 
Okay, so that is just a brief introduction of what um, audiology is. And then um, the course is four years, four years in any university that you can find in South Africa. Overseas, it's a different thing, and we'll talk about that in other episodes. And then, so you do four years, um, but it it also includes the fact that you do research from your third year to your fourth year meaning that you have a bachelor's degree but you also have um honors credits in some type of way so they don't want us to call us that you have an honors degree because they don't say it's an honors degree but you have honors like credits in the point that you do research that can be um, published with um, publications of of articles and stuff like that. So you do that, which is the hardest, but the nicest as well, because in some uh, parts, you can also be able to do other courses that don't need you to go to honors. You can just skip that part because you have credits for it and just do your master's in other courses. So that's also nice. And then we also have um, practicals, which I could say that they are the most nicest part of the course. Yes, it's nice to, to learn theoretically, but if it's a course that's tailored for you to be practicing, then it's nice for you to be practicing. Um, you do start practicing from earlier on, even though it's not, in my opinion, it's not as um in depth as it should be but you do start um having practicals from like first year a little bit there second year a little bit and then interns in like third year and fourth year and then we'll also talk about the curriculum in other videos as well but yeah that's just the full picture of what an audiology uh course looks like in most of the universities in south africa and also another thing to note is that audiology in south africa doesn't fall under one specific uh, faculty it falls under different faculties in different universities in up it falls under humanities um in vids and uct i think it falls under bsc so when you look for it just be able to look in different faculties and then find that name that says audiology it doesn't matter if it's a ba or if it's a bsc but you'll find it um whichever title that it has it has audiology in the side so you have to look in every single faculty for you to be able to see it mostly humanities um bsc and um in health they might name it differently as well but that's where you'll be able to find it okay i think that's the gist of everything that i wanted to talk about today so you know why i got into audiology i loved the essay part of the life sciences thing and then i decided to research on it which is important research 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 like everything that you want to do you have to research and know it very well and then i was able to give you a a brief introduction into what audiology is hearing system balance system working together and that's that's it um and then um how long it is where you can get it um in another video i'll also state the exact um universities that actually have it and how the curriculum looks like and how you can actually get into it but today it was just a brief introduction of how i got into it so i hope you liked it and you enjoyed this video um please like subscribe and comment down below with any questions that you may have feel free um you can also ask me in my instagram I'll be able to answer you there as well. Um, thank you. Thank you for watching. And bye.